So the first Grandmaster Nightfall for Season of the Chosen is Devil's Lair. Today, guys, we're going to be going over what we use to optimize our runs. It's going to roughly take you somewhere between 20 and 30 minutes to complete this Nightfall. I think our best run today was somewhere around 21 minutes. But the reward for this week's Nightfall is the Adept version of the Swarm. We will be reviewing it this week. It's actually got some pretty good rolls for both PvP and for PvE. The Swarm is a high-impact machine gun. And with it being an Adept weapon, it also has the ability to slot adept mods and yes the adept mods are dropping from this knife or at least big one spec is dropping let me know in the comments below though if other adept mods have been dropping for you now in terms of frequency of drops i actually got an in-depth swarm every single nightfall completion which is pretty nice but less did not get one on the first one i think bombad didn't get it on the second one so no it's not a guaranteed drop but it is very high now let's talk about how to make this nightfall easier on you and it actually starts with your sparrow look guys i'm serious here and i, and I said it all day to day during the stream. Mini Sparrow is where it's at. I know there's a Sparrow out there that's supposed to make the ads less aggressive towards you. I get it. Sounds good in theory. Does it actually work? No. No, it doesn't. Less and Bombad were getting wrecked when trying to Sparrow through this first section. And you really want to skip this entire section. The best way to do that is track down a Mini Sparrow in your collections. Hopefully you have one. Put it on and Sparrow pass everything. I know Mini Sparrow has essentially the same hitbox as a regular Sparrow, but there's something about it. There's some weird voodoo magic surrounding Mini Sparrow and ads and they just don't see you on it. Every single Nightfall run though, I would Sparrow pass everything in my little mini Sparrow and not even get looked at. Now let's go over the modifiers real quick for this Nightfall. This is a Grandmaster Nightfall, meaning everything is pretty much on this modifier list. Oh, and you do have to be 1325 power to even attempt this Nightfall. Now it comes with a Rackna, which allows for Fallen Vandals when defeated to drop those web mines at their feet. Champions for this Nightfall are Overload Champions and Barrier Champions. Radar is also disabled a number of grandmaster modifiers which includes champions mob locked loadouts match game as well as extra shields you do have limited revives as well as sepix gaze which increases incoming arc and splash damage which may result in you actually wanting to load out arc resist mods with maybe a concussive dampener mod to allow you to have more survivability what's really going to be the thing that's going to carry you through this nightfall though is your class synergy and even though our best nightfall run was around 21 minutes and i do think we might be able to trim some time off of that if you're looking to just get through this nightfall pretty steadily at a flat 25 minutes or less, by God, look no further than Ursa Furiosa. It comes with the exotic perk Ursing Guard, which states that guarded damage converts to super energy when the super ends. In something like Grandmaster content, where you take so much damage, I mean, literally everything can one bang you. This results in you always pretty much having a super. That damage scales. And just about every time I came out of my super, I would have roughly 80% or more of my super every single time. Now, let's was rocking chaos reach with geo max which was extremely beneficial in clearing ads as well as giving us orbs another thing that's really nice about geos is you can rock it alongside things like special finisher and even though special finisher does take some of your super the beautiful thing is that geos essentially just tops you right back off now bombat is actually rocking phoenix protocol with well of radiance even though i don't think we needed a well again this is a grandmaster nightfall like speed running is important but at the same time survivability is everything the last thing you want to do is try to over optimize just to trim off an extra six 60 seconds or maybe even two minutes to just wind up in a situation where if you just had maybe a well of radiance or a banner shield with ursa furiosa you might have lived so the goal is yes to optimize to try to get to this nightfall as quickly as possible but also as safely as possible so that was our team synergy and yes it was all surrounded around light based subclasses we're going to do another one of these this week with like stasis abilities i want to see how stasis handles against grandmaster level content but this is like our bread and butter loadouts right like if we just want to get through the content Content, this is what we use and it was working well for us especially our Furiosa. now the weapons of choice match game is a thing and you're pretty much gonna have to be tasting the rainbow Les is rocking tq's divination for solar i was rocking point of the stand because it comes with vorpal and its arc which is really nice and bomb map was rocking a void based bow which i know there's not a lot of things here with void shields but at the end you will encounter a lot of servitors that have void shields so have something ready, preferably a weapon to deal with those. And if you got something like Imperial Needle, that bow would do you just fine. And again, you can utilize that with overload rounds 
As far as barrier champions, we were taking advantage of sniper rifles. I've got an Eye of Soul here with Vorpal Weapon. It's been my baby for so long, but Succession is also a fantastic kinetic sniper rifle. And as far as heavy weapons go, Bob Matt and I were both rocking Anarchy, and Les was rocking a rocket launcher. Now, let me just go through this Nightfall. What's really going to make it easy is positioning. Where you position yourself, and that's really what you need to just kind of just observe. We're still kind of experimenting with it, but let's take this first room, for instance. We found that actually going to the very top of that catwalk, popping the Well of Radiance right in in that corner and me standing there with my banner shield blocking served two purposes. Number one, it actually gave us the high ground, right? Which is extremely beneficial. And number two, with me standing on top, it made all the ads that were coming out even the snipers in the very far back to look at me and do damage to my banner shield, which of course resulted in me getting my super back. The problem is, is that container and Bungie's weird geometry resulted in sometimes damage somehow getting through, like area effect damage that would still hit less in Bombat. So we actually found that the better way to do this is to still pop the Well of Radiance in that corner, but I actually stand to the right of the well. Still on the catwalk. I know some of the ads might be a little irritating to reach, but that's why you got a bow, man. You got a bow, you got a sniper, a rifle. These are Grandmaster Nightfalls, fellas. Everything can wreck you. So distance is your friend here. Now that was pretty much the best positioning that we had right there, which takes us to this open area, which is probably arguably the hardest area, even harder than the boss room itself, as the enemies are just so spread out. I would say whoever the person is on your fire team using Banner Shield and Ursa, don't conserve your super. Use it as much as you can. Everything from the smallest ad to the giant tank does a crap load of damage. So even if you're just blocking some dregs, it's going to give you your super back. There was a lot of times that I found myself trying to conserve my super for those moments that I think we would need it. And what I came to understand was that actually I should just be popping my super just about every chance I got. Now we dealt with the barrier champions as well as these ads in front of us. And then we proceeded to deal with the ads behind us. We want to make sure we didn't get flanked as we want to take to the rooftop and now deal with the tank directly in front of us. Now Bob would actually drop as well. And all three of us would focus damage on the walker as soon as it landed. If the walker is not killed in time, like before he actually gets back up and starts doing damage to you and your fire team, my Ursa user on the team, immediately pop your banner shield and proceed to block, or it's going to destroy you and your fire team. And you know, if you want to just take it slow and steady, you might still want to just pop it anyways and block, because there is snipers, a lot of vandals out there that can still easily one bang you, and I've seen it even happen through a well of radiance. I think potentially an arc resist mod would have allowed you to survive, but keep that in mind. I know that well of radiance is pretty good, but Grandmaster, everything does so much damage that you Yes, you can easily get killed in your own well. Now, upon dealing with the tank, we would then focus up on the Briggs as we kind of got the high ground angle on all of them. I would definitely suggest dealing with them before moving down to ground level. And we're still just trying to perfect this but we would deal with both the bricks and then proceed to go left. Now, the reason why we went left here instead of right, I just found it easier on the left side to just kind of make all the ads face us in one direction. And we were able to kind of like pull some of the champions to that left side. This kind of made the enemies come toward us versus us going toward them and overexposing ourselves. You'll have things like an overload champion there in the middle, a barrier champion in the back, as well as two other overload champions that are in the back as well. All of these champions are extremely annoying to get angles on, which is why I felt like the left side Side, just kind of made them come out of that area a little more and actually made the ads want to engage you. And if you're rocking something like Ursa, that's very important. You want to be able to pull all the enemies almost like a tank would and center them up for you and your fire team. Now let's talk about the boss room. Even though this room is to me not the hardest room, it definitely is the most chaotic room. You will have ads raining on you. Listen guys, this may not be fun to you, but it's kind of fun to me. Just the amount of supers we were constantly popping. And this is how you're going to make this room easier on yourself. After doing the initial damage phase there to Sepix. Whoever your Well of Radiance Warlock is, they need to pop their well inside of the room. Now, the reason why they want to do that is the well goes through the wall. About half of the well will be peeking out through the wall and allowing people on the other side of the wall to still get health. But there's not too much well where it pushes your Ursa Furiosa Titan out of those choke points. Again, you've got three main areas where enemies are going to come from. You've got like a left lane there, a middle lane there, and a right lane. And ideally, what you want to do as the Titan is you want to block in a way where you're catching all three lanes. All ads are pretty much unloading all of their damage in front of you. And again, as the Ursa Furiosa Titan, if you're standing in the well taking damage, it does not proc the perk correctly. So whoever the well user is, placement of that well is extremely important, which is why I say placing it inside of the room and then proceed to go outside, sit in that corner, 
and allow your Titan with Ursa to sit there and kind of just caddy themselves, catching all three of these exposure lanes. Is there a better spot on this map? Potentially. I was actually looking at the right side and maybe even the top side, and there used to be people that would just go downstairs. The problem is with all those areas, it leaves you exposed when you come out of your super, especially your fire team. And you really want to tell your fire team when your super is about to run out so they don't get insta-killed. This is Grandmaster. Everything does a lot of damage. If you don't warn your fire team that your super is about to run out, it's a good chance, even if they're inside of the well, especially in this room, that they're going to get killed which is why popping the well inside would still allow us to run inside after Ursa would run out. I would proceed to pick up a few orbs. All the orbs that I just gave to Bombad and his Well of Radiance, he would proceed to pop his well yet again, thus the rinse and repeat here. And throughout this entire thing, whoever your third player is needs to be doing damage, whether it's Chaos Reach or some other super. The way I kind of looked at this, Bungie's really starting to like put us almost into like our class identities, right? Like Bombad's playing support, playing as a healer. I'm playing tank with Ursa Furiosa and let is playing DPS with Chaos Reach and Geos. Essentially the concept that applies to many other MRPGs, right? For most other content though, I would say that you don't really have to adhere to these rules, but for Grandmaster Nightfalls, definitely. Especially Ursa Furiosa. Banish Shield today with Ursa was absolutely carrying this team. Not trying to pat myself on the back, I'm just saying. Being able to tank all of this damage is super, super clutch. Now my last suggestions overall, guys, you definitely want to be taking advantage of Charge with Light. And normally I kind of like lean toward high energy fire, because Considering that this is Grandmaster Nightfalls, I like just survivability. Protective life saves you so, so many times, but still rock out things like Radiant Light, Powerful Friends, things to give your teammates charges with light. I was also rocking stacks on stacks, but Protective Light was keeping me alive in situations, especially in between supers, where I'm often left pretty exposed. So guys, that is your Nightfall guide for this week. If you do want to rock the same class energy that we're rocking, remember guys, placement is everything. As far as the Nightfall itself though, be methodical be patient you definitely want to focus each enemy especially champions one at a time together with it being grandmaster everything has so much health that if you're not focusing the same champions or the same boss or the same ad together it can be kind of a nightmare but guys good luck again review for the swarm will be this week i'm still hunting down some god rolls it's looking pretty good though this machine gun has some like almost like 21 percent delirium qualities right with things like one for all i heard dragonfly is pretty good on it i'm actually really excited to see how this weapon works with the new mod for my folks that do have some god rolls, feel free to reach out to me in Discord. We have a god roll channel. A lot of people like to post up their rolls and stuff and flex. Feel free to reach out to me, though, and show me your rolls, as I definitely want to get the best ones to review. Well, fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.